That's all I want to see. I just want to see her actually come out of this realizing how she hurt people and wanting to do better. And from what I've seen, at least talking to her one-on-one, -on -one, I'm pretty sure she realizes that she did hurt people. But it's really hard having these sort of conversations. Because so many people got hurt, and because there is an incentive in order to attack people and not try and mend bridges, which is something that, like going over the Noodlegate article, I can very much sympathize with. Okay, so well, while I was in the US, a bunch of stuff happened with Brianna Wu, and now I'm gonna cover everything that happened and give my thoughts, because I know that people have really wanted to hear what I have to say about all of this, and some people, I think, got the wrong impression on how I reacted to this at the time. In the minute I left, the world went into chaos. It was further proof I need to stay in Ireland, because when I leave Ireland, things get crazy. I am literally staying here for the greater good of humanity. So... I'm gonna start off with her apology and then like get into everything that happened, all of the leaks. Some group DMs got leaked tonight and were selectively chosen to paint a completely false narrative about me not respecting non-binary people. If you read our whole group chat, you'd see comments from me talking about how I think non-binary people are experiencing real pain and how even though I don't understand it, they deserve respect. I also said they need more healthcare. This is why you should be very suspicious of things selectively edited by people with an axe to grind. They're not going to show you the parts that don't fit their agenda. I'll, I respect non-binary people. I will call you by whatever pronouns you prefer, and I'll vote for whatever politician that will give you more rights. Anyone saying otherwise is lying. My record is nothing but allyship. I was also caught making some spectacularly unkind comments about another woman's fashion choices. I don't know what to tell you. This is what women do. I'm not proud of it. So I defended her and I want to give some context on why I defended Brianna Wu. I was traveling in a foreign country and I had COVID and I didn't actually look into all of the things that were said and literally assumed that this was all just women being catty in a group chat. And I stand by that, that women are catty, especially in private. I've been in enough friend circles that are all women to know the fact that women can be pretty mean to each other. But I think that I should have looked into all of this instead of immediately shooting at the hip. So here's what I said about the situation. I've been out for almost 13 years, and I guarantee most people outraged by this have a private account somewhere on Twitter where they are saying worse. The real proof trans women are women is how catty they are to each other. Just to clarify, I agree that those DMs aren't good. My point is not that it's okay Brianna said those things. What I'm saying is that this mean girl behavior is much more common in private than most people are willing to admit. I've seen little attempt at constructive dialogue today. Let's Let's actually get into the things that were said in these leaks. So someone posted a photo of Benny and said it puts the lotion on its skin, which is a reference to Buffalo Bill from Silence of the Lambs, which very I think it's really fucking weird. Like I just like straight up think that it's incredibly fucking weird to attack a trans woman in this way and in like inciting these tropes because the whole thing with Buffalo Bill and Silence of the Lambs is that Buffalo Bill and this was what the psychologists in the movie were saying was that he was making a woman suit and that he was like an autogynophile who got sexual thrills out of wearing this suit out of the women that he had murdered. The thing that people are getting really mad about in this circumstance is what Brianna said here. This is in response to what Jenny said up here. That her dress reminds me of those god-awful skirts that femboys buy. And Brianna responds to this by saying, I mean, if you're not super hot, maybe just dress normally and don't present yourself as a transvestite. You can go a long way with just being skinny and dressing normally. And it's just, I don't think this is called for. 
I do want to say something though. I was at an event in person with Brianna and I told Brianna in person that I don't think that this is okay and that she can't do this kind of stuff. Like I basically told her that if there was a repeat of this event, I would distance myself from her publicly because I don't think that this is okay. And another thing that really frustrated me about all of this coming out was because I had spent quite a bit of time showing people that Benny engages in genocide denial and consistently uses her platform to defend authoritarian regimes and this basically sidelined all of it. Now, I know that this was all leaked. Like, this was all private DMs, you know? There was never a point where Brianna knew that this was going to come out. But I still think that if you're going to make criticisms of people, they should be constructive criticisms of people. Like, there are many reasons why you should be mad about Benny without delving into transphobia. This basically just put Benny into the position of victim and everyone completely washed over all of the heinous shit that she engaged in only days prior. So let me, let me read all of this. This is all Brianna. I think because I'm old enough to remember when we moved away from transsexual, I'm a bit more nuanced. You have to remember daytime TV was obsessed with the sex and transsexual, so it was trying to water that down. I do think that as transgender doesn't mean anything clinically anymore, it makes sense to bring it back. There's something that I think is missing from this discourse that is important to know. And unfortunately, these leaks ended up confirming this. I haven't talked about this previously, but to all of the people who have been wondering about this, yes, Brianna is a trans woman. She has not been very open about this. And the reason why she hasn't been open about this is that she came out in a much different time. And this isn't me defending her behavior. This is me trying to contextualize why she is this way. She came out in a time when being open as trans is something that would absolutely destroy your life. And she's held on to a lot of that. Now, I'm biased because I'm still going to be working with her and I still consider her a friend and I think the best thing that I can do as a friend to her is to be honest with her that the behavior that she engaged in isn't okay. But I'm glad that I had the opportunity to address this in person and to try and come at this from a place of actually understanding instead of immediately attacking her. The reason that we started talking with each other in the first place is because of the fact that we were both the target of a far-right harassment campaign. She was the target of Gamergate and the same people who pioneered and orchestrated Gamergate were the same people who drove me to almost take my own life last year. So more than anything, I don't want to see Brianna Wu disappear. I just want to see her become better and not engage in this kind of stuff. I think that she does have a lot that she can offer the world, but she needs to be a lot smarter with how she engages online. So this is where things are getting a bit dicey, I think. Doe didn't detransition because they still consider themselves trans, but agender and believe trans is an amorphous blob of terms that mean a political statement against the societal concept of gender. But they have stopped taking hormones because they also believe hormones are a weapon of societal construct of gender assimilation. This isn't true, by the way. Doe is very much on hormones. It's really weird. Like, I don't know why Doe needed to be attacked at all. Boyd Zanya started a shitstorm tonight. Doe came up and I repeat your very plausible position that it pronouns are about a degradation fetish. Demon Mama is in the group chat and I didn't know they were dating. Yeah, it's just not okay. It's just, it's not okay. And it doesn't have anything to do with building, with building bridges and trying to put aside political differences to work towards progressive victories. The last thing I wanted to talk about about like all of this stuff is how mad people got about this statement that I made in the discord 
because I think that people misunderstood what I was saying, and I can understand why. I said in the discourse, trans medicalist arguments are the only way you can protect the rights of trans people in the courts, removing concepts like dysphoria that have a basis in medical literature from the discourse and simply making it a matter of self-identification is going to fuck all of us. I think like one of the things that I said earlier was that I was sick and traveling and I oversimplified the position that I had. So like the first thing I need to say is that I am not a trans medicalist. For the people in the chat who don't know what trans medicalism is, it is the belief that in order to be transgender, you need to have gender dysphoria. And that is not what I believe. I do not experience gender dysphoria. So by that logic, I wouldn't be transgender. Transgender being an umbrella term allows for a wide spectrum of people to inhabit that term. You know, it's not a one size fits all identity. The other thing is that when I made this argument, I was specifically talking about surgeries and that when people on the right, when conservatives are attacking trans people's ability to legally access things like sexual reassignment surgery, I think that using medical arguments is the most effective way to go about defending that. I think that self-identification is important, and I think that it's great for things like changing your gender identification marker. I think that both things can be true, but I do think that gender dysphoria as a medical concept does play an important role in defending trans healthcare access. Like, I don't necessarily believe that you need dysphoria in order to be trans, but I think that without concepts like dysphoria as a way to fight back against rolling back medical access, it would just be significantly harder. It's the one thing more immediately viable, but would you say we need to push even further? That would just be a stepping stone, not the ideal. Yeah, I don't think it's ideal. When I said trans medicalist, I literally pushed the word trans and medical together without realizing that I basically said I believe that you need dysphoria to be trans. And that's not what I was trying to say. I'm definitely willing to have a conversation about it. You literally have a disease that makes you characterize your opinions in the worst possible language. That's true. Look, I'm... You have to understand that I am from a country with a long and proud heritage of making very bad political decisions. You know, I'm from the place that has uh, the prime minister that did blackface and did a standing ovation to a literal fucking Nazi. You need to be patient with me, okay? We're not good at this. I don't want to just condemn people, especially when I know that Brianna is very much willing to have these conversations and have these conversations publicly. And I just, I want to see more of those conversations happening. I also just am very sympathetic whenever I see someone getting absolutely fucking dragged through the mud on social media because I know how bad it feels and that there is nothing that you can do in the moment in order to make the situation better. You get, and I think especially sometimes, you get into this mindset where when you are like the main character, you want to defend yourself and you want to stick with people who are defending you. And a lot of times that makes the situation a lot worse. Like think what happened to Anna Kasparian right? Where she got dragged through the mud and then she ended up boosting a bunch of people who were center right or just like actual conservatives. And it just made people even more mad. And I'm pretty sure like a lot of that was just her doing it out of the fact that it fucking sucks being dragged and she just dug her feet in. And this isn't even me like trying to defend her. I just understand what it's like being in that circumstance and making a whole bunch of bad decisions as a result of it. So sometimes your impulse is to hold on to the few close connections and people you feel you can trust because you know what it's like to get shit, but sometimes that defensiveness can be to a fault. Like normal friend defensiveness plus histories being harassed, shared trauma, stuff like that. I sometimes, yeah, I think everyone's like that actually. I, I think that everyone is more defensive of their friends and they're more willing to make excuses for their friends and i wanted to be able to criticize my friends when they fuck up 
because I do think that Brianna fucked up, and I feel like unless I would be willing to admit that, I would be a hypocrite. Though I did say that someone said that it was weird that I have empathy for the person who did harm, but not really talking about the person it harmed. But the person in this circumstance that did harm was the person who leaked the group chat in the first place because it put all of those hurtful words directly into the line of sight of the people that were being talked about. And up until then, there was no harm because it was a private group chat. She was still fucking shitty for saying those things in the group chat, but the person who leaked the group chat in the first place is the person who did harm in this circumstance. And I don't even know who it was. Like in the chat, instead of speaking up and challenging her is the worst action in this. Well, here's the thing. We don't actually know who leaked it or what their motivation was from leaking it. I would like to know why that happened. Like why the person leaked it. Was it just chaos? Was it out of like a political disagreement? I actually don't know. I was hoping that I made the correct call and personally holding back from giving you negative feedback. Now I have no doubt. I'm glad you offered this clarification because I know you do care about the trans community. I do feel Brandon Wu's statements are evidence of a transphobic mindset. I hope that changes. I am disappointed, but I just want to see her get better. I don't want to throw, I don't want to like completely fucking drag her when I know that she feels really bad about all of this. I hope that there are more positive conversations that can come out of this. And I know that any of the people who were talked about who feel hurt by the things that she said, I'm pretty sure she would be willing to have those conversations. That is one thing I will say that I really like is that she's willing to have those conversations. No one has to like her or trust her. That's definitely not something that I am trying to uh, say right now. You can absolutely criticize her. You can be part of this community and criticize her as well. But all I would ask is that the criticisms that you make of her should be coming from a place of wanting to see her do better instead of wanting to excise her from any online progressive space. That's all I want to see. I just want to see her actually come out of this realizing how she hurt people and wanting to do better. And from what I've seen, at least talking to her one-on-one, -on -one, I'm pretty sure she realizes that she did hurt people but it's really hard having these sort of conversations because so many people got hurt and because there is an incentive in order to attack people and not try and mend bridges which is something that like going over the noodle gate article i can very much sympathize with like i i in the in the discord um, when all of this stuff was going down, people were calling me retarded because they disagreed with my opinion. And I, I just, I just let them do it. I don't care. Although well, Demon Mama seemed really pissed in that stream, understanding. I mean, yeah, Demon Mama has every right to be pissed off by this. Look, look, if, if, if like a, if a public figure ever decides to like start shit talking my partner in a group chat and it gets leaked, knives are out. I, that's too personal. I don't, I don't, I don't expect you to like be completely emotionally on an even keel after something like that. The thing that I'm really frustrated about with this situation, as I said before, is that Benny came away from this circumstance with a lot of sympathy when she was defending some heinous shit. I think it was good that it leaked, revealed that her public tweets were intentional deception. I mean, yeah, yes and no. Like, I, I definitely think that people had a right to know if she was saying weird shit in private that she wouldn't say in public. But at the same time, I feel like leaking all of that just hurt a lot of people when it didn't need to. Yeah. First off, thank you. I appreciate that understanding. The continued harassment and mistreatment dough makes me literally sick. The fact it flowed through Brianna into my own peaceful space really hurts. I think, like, tonight... Maybe I should reach out to both of you and see if there's anything that can be done to fix this. Or maybe it's too soon, but I would like to get to a point where this shit is just... Where this is solved and also Brianna realizes how fucking hurtful it was and this isn't going to happen again.
Brianna has damaged people's ability to trust her. I don't want I don't want her ousted from any space or cancel or anything personally, but she has to grapple with the fact people are reasonable to feel betrayed and distrustful in the circumstance, especially with public behavior of the other people in the chat on display currently, or it will prevent bridges being built. Like I I I was trying to like avoid getting into like a back and forth with like the people in that group chat cuz yeah, they they've said a lot of weird stuff and a lot of hurtful stuff and i didn't want to give them a reason to like redirect this weird back and forth to me i'm sorry that was a bit selfish i'm up for another discussion on the gender dysphoria requirement for bottom surgery and stuff there's a lot of moving parts surrounding it that need to be considered and that's also, that's like the problem that i'm having with the conversation when i was talking about that i was having this conversation in the context of people trying to use uh, the courts to roll back trans access to medical care. Like, I definitely think in an ideal circumstance, you shouldn't have to go through an entire medical gauntlet in order to access sexual reassignment surgery. But I don't think that under the current system, it would be able to be defended unless it exists within the medical framework. It's already getting rolled back, like, all across the world and in many states in the United States. So it's, yeah.